how do you actually measure, you know, that it is safe, that this earthquake seismic activity that was felt on your site actually has not affected you down the hole? And he said, oh, well, I'll just go check the work fronts and have a look and have a listen and it'll be all good. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, no, I want x-ray machines, I want drones in there, I want a special, well, I don't know what I want, but I want something better than people having to squeeze. I know back in New Zealand they had a bigger earthquake back in 1967. Uh, but, uh, it was called an Ungahua, and, and that's just north of Greymouth. Mm -hmm. And w what happens, all our mines in New Zealand are in what they call the Paparoa Ranges. That, uh, it's all in, in mountains. So, so w uh, we go in the side of mountains and, and do our, uh, uh, set our mines and that up. But the big one in 1967 was, I'm pretty sure it was about an eight or something like that. It was a... It devastated some of the towns, like hills just collapsed and mountains and everything. But mm. the guys on night shift, what I remember, I wasn't there at the time, I was still school. But the guys on night shift said they never felt a thing. Welcome to the Beers with a Miner podcast. My name is Mad Mumsy and I've been driving the huge dump trucks in Australian open cup mines for over 10 years now. I wish I had a dollar for everyone who said to me, how does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? Ah, oh, you must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? My mining friends are asked these questions all the time too. This is what started the Mad Mumsy journey to share stories and tips from living a mining lifestyle and to let others know what it's really like. Not everyone is cut out to be a miner, but why not? What does it take to thrive and survive in this industry? Now, let's dig in. Get it? Dig mining. Oh, I crack me up. Hello and welcome to episode 58 of the Beers with a Miner podcast. My name is Mad Mumsy and today I'm joined by two people. Our very own hard hat mentor, my sister, the other half of Steel Cap Sisters. Listen to the end to find out what the hell Steel Cap Sisters is all about. And also Buck Ian Buchanan. He is a deputy working out of Moorumbah, underground miner, coal miner of many, many decades. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind me saying. And we just had our first conversation together and we chatted about how do earthquakes affect mining and what can be done. And that's what also I speak to my sister about. We have a good chat about it and I share <laughs> A fun time when there was an earthquake out at our mine and something that happened with all the supervisors. So listen in for that chat. And yeah, I ended up contacting Ian because I was being asked on social media, how does it affect mining and what do they do when there's an earthquake? So we kind of guessed a bit, but I decided to uh, ask someone who I knew would know and that being Buck. He's also an author of Coal Faces Mining, which I got the book last week. If you have a look on Mad Mumsy Facebook page, I shared the video, the unboxing. And it's awesome. It's got heaps of pictures and I just love it. And I've been reading little bits of it here and there, but it's really good. And he's sharing stories of his mining journey, but also of the people that he's met along the way. And I really enjoyed our first chat. I've just hung up from him and his wife. They're on a big trek up north. Uh, they're out near Catherine at the moment. And when he comes back, we're going to sit down and have have a beer. And I'll find out all about his mining journey and pick his brains. But for today, he's jumped on board to give his thoughts on what happens when there's an earthquake. So I will let you dig in. Get it? Dig mining. <laughs> it cracked me up. And I cracked Buck up when I said it as well. <laughs> okay, here we go. How to Hat Mentor, Ian Buck Buchanan and Mad Mumsy talking about what happens when there's an earthquake and how does it relate to mining. Okay, so. First time I heard about the earthquake, apparently, that we had here in WA, was from you guys over there in Queensland. Mm. Saying, did you feel the earthquake? And I'm the, yeah, what earthquake? 
<laughs> so immediately, excuse me, you know, I'm just a little bit cook. Hang so, on, just let me interrupt and share that my daughter put that in our little three-way text yes. group. The, the real, real yeah, the real miner <laughs> had literally just driven into the driveway in his Malu Ute, and it's really loud. And she said, did you feel the earthquake? And I'm like, oh, no, it's, it's just a real miner. He's just rocked up. And, and then she's like, no, Mum, there was an earthquake in WA. And they're like, oh, oh, really? oh okay. How's oh that for God. timing? Well, that's freaky too. Yeah, that was timing, right? Yeah, well, like I saw that message and I thought, what earthquake? And then when you put your thing about, nah, it's just a real miner showed up, I thought, <laughs> okay, oh, that's a joke, in joke I'm not in on. And then... Because when I've been meaning to send messages to one of you or the other, because we had that three-way message going, I keep sending it to the wrong one. Mm. So you're all seeing everything. But never mind. Um, and then I think it was a real miner. He said, no, there was, there was an earthquake in WA. Um, Shannon and, said, yeah. And I just thought, okay, well, I'm just going to go check this out. So I just, as you do, Googled. Bang. And it was only three quarters of an hour earlier. Ah, so That's it just the happened. things that come up on it. And it said 6.5 biggest earthquake ever recorded in WA. It's just hit Broome, near the Broome, or 200 k's off Broome. Like, off all right, yeah. Area, all around Broome, but they said it was filled. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a loud motorbike going past. Can okay. you hear that? No. Fucking hell, get an exhaust, mate. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> it's not yeah. even a Harley. <laughs> Yeah, so the strongest one ever recorded in WA. Yes, it's point five on the Richter, and um, it was apparently 200 k's off of Broome, like it must have been offshore, mm. but the red area was all around Broome, but they reckon it's felt from in Perth and Desperate, so we're in between all of those. Yeah. But it missed me, and I didn't feel anything. I was sitting there not doing much. I was social media I mean, you and I were doing stuff. Yeah. I didn't feel anything. So then... I Googled it and it freaked me out. I thought, oh, my God. So I had a bit of a look and, um, you know, I put it on LinkedIn and I said, apparently we had an earthquake the first I heard about it and I just said, I hope everyone's okay. Yeah. And that was it, sort of thing. And then my real miner, who also works underground, <laughs> um, is, is on night shift and when he rang, when he woke up this afternoon, he said, we talked about our girls first, of course, the chookies and the ping pong ball celebration. Yeah. And then he said... Um, so the earthquake, um, I said, yeah, did you see that message? He said, no, well, it woke me up. Said, what? <laughs> what? The message? <laughs> no. The yeah, earthquake. I know, right? Yeah, <sighs> and he's Mick Farrow, Mick Farrow, Mick Farrow Tower, right, which is way inland, up north, but way inland. Mm. I said, well, you actually felt it. He said, well, I heard something. It felt like the building was rattling big time, like pretty full on, loud, super loud, he said. And like the aircon had lost something in it, it was going bang, 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 bang. Yeah. He said, and I just said, oh, God, great aircon. And then he just went back to sleep. And so that tells me that was pretty full noise. If the building was sort of shaking and the aircon, he, what he thought was banging against the donger. Yeah. That means that's pretty huge. And, and he said straight out, because he's at work when he rang me, because um, the kids have gone underground and he had a moment. Yeah. Because he's your boss. And he said, no, um, Apparently no one felt a thing underground, which is good news. Yeah. I'm saying that, the sceptic of me thought, yeah, no, it's not good news, because if it was felt above ground, surely something somewhere would be happening down there, because I know not a great deal about these things, but I do know that um, seismic activity underground is not a good thing, and um, Beaconsfield just comes to mind. Yeah. That was the cause of it, by the way. So, you know, let's... I'm not going to go... Catastrophise me and be have amped thoughts, but um, I will say I will rest easier when he texts me that he's out of the hole tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day because there'll probably be aftershocks and you know, yeah, that's I don't nice. know. He seems to think it's pretty solid ground down there, but everyone does until it isn't, you know, yeah. Um, and then it got me worrying about all of our other private and peeps who are everywhere underground. And then I started thinking about the stability of the pits and, cause, you know, as you know, the wall collapses and things that have killed old mates very, very recently. Yeah. Um, that's about stability and it doesn't take much to um, get someone in trouble. So I'm worried for all of our people 
um, as to what this may or may not do, and let's hope it does nothing. And if seven whole days go by mm. and no one's had anything, well, then I'll be a bit happier. But till then, yeah, no. I'm going to be very worried for everybody, I reckon, well, without being ridiculous about it. Yeah. But well, my question is, and I'm sure some people smarter than us know, that how do you actually measure, you know, that it is safe, that this earthquake and seismic activity that was felt on your site actually has not affected you down the hole? And he said, oh, well, they'll just go and check the work fronts and have a look and have a listen and it'll be all good. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, no, I want X-ray machines, I want drones in there, I want special, well, I don't know what I want, but I want something better than people having to squeeze, you know? So... I'm sure they know what they're doing. It's not their first radio, but it, I don't trust Big Brother at all, just quietly. Just look after our people enough. Because we don't have enough earthquakes, is my point, over here anyway. Which is a good thing. Mm. That That is a good thing, to not have enough earthquakes. But when you do, yeah, now what? Big thing that I I found sometimes was, well... You know, we'll just do a JSA and everyone sign off on it and, you know, we've all signed that bit of paper so it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, that'll you know? help. But, yeah. Oh, you try <laughs> is Yeah, no. Yeah, well, no, you know. Yeah, but yeah. we've had, we've had, talking about high wall instability and stuff, so many over the years I've been around that have failed and I remember at this one band camp going in and the guy I was going out with at the time was in the digger and we're like, um, this, it wasn't a high wall, it was a low wall. So it's yep. not the sharp edgy one, it's more like the mound. Yep. Um, from the drag lines and stuff. And it was moving. And I'd never seen that before because I had come from, um, hard rock into coal. And it was moving so fast. Like you'd go to the dump and come back and the lighting plant that you were looking at on the floor that you drive past to get to the digger. One had fallen over because ground had heaved because it's coming in and all the all the knobs were up on the hill because you could stand up there and watch it and they were radioing us saying, no, no, it's all right, it's not moving, you'll be right, go and get another load. And, um, yeah, so we did that for a couple of hours probably and then this one... <laughs> Last time I went back in the lighting plant, the, I can't believe how much the floor lifted up because with coal, wow. the floor is so soft. And yes, as you take yes. the layer of coal out, everything starts to fall around it, you know. Yes. Um, yes. But this, we had a wall creeping at us and it was pushing on the floor that we were driving yeah. on. And yeah. then my partner was sitting in the digger at the time. And... um Anyway, he ended up saying, no, nope, I'm out of here, and packed, yep. like, walked the digger out, got it up to the end near the corner. We got our load out, and um, he got his light vehicle out up the ramp just before a big crack opened up in the ramp, and oh, they yeah. didn't get back in there for weeks. And we were yep. driving, they were saying, no, nah, no, nah, you'll be right, and the geologists well, are up it. there, all the rock lickers, all the, yep. you know. But yep. Yep. since then, I've been on sites where they have... um Sort of radar machines and stuff. I don't know. There's te- right, more yeah. technology. All yeah, of stuff. and they yeah. point it at the yeah. wall, and then the alarm will go off, and then the alarm goes off. Everyone's yeah. out, and so that's, yeah. that's the sort of stuff. Hopefully, they've got after those well, sort of situations. Right. That's right. And, and you know, um, uh, Band Camp was that very recently. One of the, their sites, because I was regional for them, they were shut down and, and for a very long time parts of the mine because of a massive wall slippages, huge, massive, yeah, like hippopotamic. And um, like what? Hi- what's thing. hippopotamic? What's that word? Hippopotamic. It means big. <laughs> oh, is that a real word, or did you make that up? No, it's real. Hippopotamic. Oh. Oh. I got it off a tip, a tip ad years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's hippopotamic, it means big, it's about a big crunchy chip, and I looked it up and it is real. I was going to say, you try, I, they made that up, but no, it's real. Okay, yeah, cool. It's true. So, um, yeah, that, that was pretty freaking, it, it, it really um, affected the culture big time because people's job security then started weighing on mines, and anyway, it's a big deal, but seismic activity is a, a big topic, and because they go deeper and deeper and deeper, and and uh, the deeper you go, it's almost like you create your own seismic activity, as you would imagine. You drill holes in, in, you know, structures and you're blowing the shit up. 
and you make voids where there weren't. And so, of course, it creates its own seismic activity mm. because of what you're doing. And it affects water tables. It does all sorts of stuff. So it's not a new thing. But I guess they know that. They plan for that and what they're doing because um, I ask big questions. No one else asks questions. At all. And, and then this week they've had an earthquake. Oh, I know. And so but I guess what I'm thinking here, where I'm going with this is that's different because they know what they're going to do and they know when it's coming and so they plan around it and they mitigate the risk and they do put pillars in and paste plant. They build a whole new paste plant so that they can actually shore up these things. Like they, they do them spend a fortune because they know what they're going to do. Yeah. They need to stabilise the ground. But... That's forewarned is forearmed. My concern here is mm, that's not what's happened now. There's no forewarning. It's just bang, it's just happened. Mm. So now what, you know, and there'll be aftershocks and there'll be stuff going on. And, and I'm sure that it's nothing and it's all no problems and they're all over it. But if alarm bells aren't going off uh, across every underground mine around all of WA at the minute and Territory and everywhere, actually, half of Australia by the sound of it, if, if my real miner can feel it there where he is... I mean, someone look on a map of where Meek and Barrett is from Broome, that's a long way. Um, so if he felt it there, there are, you know, rippling effects going on. And, and so I'm sure that they're all just quietly without, you know, you never run across the parade ground because you'll panic the troops. But I'm hoping <laughs> that in the background, I'm, I'm hoping that in the background they are seriously saying, what can we do? How can we check this? Yeah, To make surely. sure... And they will, because of course they care, but at the same time, their production will suffer big time if they're not all over it, so, mm. you know, <laughs> there is that. Um, but yeah, it is, thank you for ringing, because you must have known, yeah, she's probably a bit worried, isn't it? Yes. I, yeah. I mean, if there was an earthquake anywhere near any, over there, everyone would be the same way you would be. And maybe it's because ignorance is bliss, or maybe ignorance makes us, those of us who don't know enough about it, we're catastrophizing and I'm not freaking out I'm just quietly hoping hmm. just quietly hoping that our industry is all over it because you know there's too many of our good good peeps our rock and fire peeps and our tribe um, they could all be at risk if they don't get if they're not like this so yeah, hmm. it's a big deal for me it's a big deal well a few years ago um, we had an earthquake it wasn't I'm pretty sure it wasn't 6.5 I'll have to do some research and find out what it was. We had a couple, actually, in a few months. And um, uh, my daughter was home and with, with someone else and they felt it. And I was out at work, which is about 200 k's inland, I guess, again, yep. as the crow flies maybe, oh, I think. Something like that, over the hill, you know. And um, yeah. she messaged me <laughs> and said, Mum... Bloody earthquake, we're on day shift. And be bug I was at crib, which is why I had my phone. And um be buggered if uh we were outside this was the best crib up we've ever had. It was a big massive square one and when it rained we used to play cricket inside and oh you my had God, that was a big one. Oh, you know, you'd make a ball out of paper and yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile I'm trying to sleep under the table, you know. <laughs> um it was the best. It was like Two joined together, kind of. It's right. hard to describe. And then it had a big veranda out the front, all concrete. And then on the yeah. side was the supervisor's um, donger. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we were outside um, and when the earthquake hit and people inside reckoned that the fridges were rocking. And wow. But all we didn't know about that, a couple of them come out and went like, whoa, and at the same time, three supervisors come flying out of that supervisor's room looking for people. They thought people were throwing shit at the donger. <laughs> and they're like, why do you lot? What are you, what's going on? You're like, yeah, that was, that not was. Much, not much assumptions and biases going on there. Absolutely. They were gulling for heads. And then the people come flying out for, no, the supervisors came out first. That's right. Cause they were right there. And then the people come flying out the crib out saying, man, we must have had an earthquake. They was like, fuck off. And then I noticed on my phone, I'm like, well, yeah, they just had one on the coast. And so it wow. travels inland, you know. Um, yeah. But we yeah. didn't have, from memory, we didn't have any issues in the pit. But I can't remember anything being checked or we certainly, I can't remember stopping production, not saying we did it, but I just remember how funny it was like these three stooges come flying out of the group up. 
Well, I mean, out of the out of the supervisor's office. Oh, it, that's that went down in history, mate. That did. That, that's oh my right. god. We just made me think too, you know, off the WA coast, there's lots of oil rigs and, and things mm. out in the ocean there, and I'm just thinking that seismic activity out there can't be good for them because depending on how it worked, it could have been tsunami threats. I mean, all sorts of stuff would happen. Mm. And then, as you were talking about that, and I don't know why why it triggered it, because um, all I was seeing was the supervisors running out of accusing you guys of throwing stuff at them. <laughs> that triggered a memory. It's got nothing to do with your supervisors running out accusing your stuff. Um, yesterday, when I was sitting here and I, I'd done enough for the day and I was worn out because I'm a bit sick because so I hadn't really done much at all, I thought I need to watch a blockbuster, so guess which movie I watched? Oh, I don't know. San Andreas. Oh, stop it. Oh, oh fuck off. What? It's like my fault. I watched San Andreas and loved it, which is, you know, the major new earthquake movie that's been around for a couple of years now, but it was brilliant. <sighs> And and that's just reminded me, it's like, oh, I should have watched her. I made this earthquake happen. I mean, I'm not that powerful, but the way your mind works, it's just really weird. And there's so much been going on lately. Every time I think of something, something like that happens. Like, remember I saw that really weird car, old car, and I knew it took a car show that day, and I didn't yes. know. Yes. Yeah, and then this, I watch this movie, and the next day there's an earthquake. It's like, oh, my God. I mean, you think. You're connected. Know. Yes, you're in the vortex. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. Yeah. But I'm not, well, I don't want to be in a roll with earthquakes. I'd rather be on a roll with good things, not the caca things. You know, what well, movie I'm going to watch tonight? I don't want to watch a movie about a serial killer that I usually do because God knows what will happen then. Um, yeah, no, I don't. Just don't. Yeah, no, I won't. I watch happy, I watch happy things tonight. Happy but things. Anyway, I'm watching uh, MasterChef, if that helps. Oh, I just watched MasterChef today, which I haven't watched forever. Oh, right. And they're in WA. I was doing a catch-up thing. They're in WA. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, tonight is judgment night and someone goes home. Oh, good. I want to see that. Is yeah. it on right now? It is here right now, but you're two hours behind. But it's nearly over, so it's nine o'clock, so probably half an hour there it'll be on. Oh, I like catch-up TV anyway, so less ads. Oh, yeah. Um, of course you do. Way less ads. But, yes. um, look, thank you so much for ringing because I know you were... Uh, he must have been concerned. We've had enough chats lately. We weren't supposed to be talking yet, but I know the text was enough. So I appreciate the fact that you thought I'd better ring up and see you. Ask, are you okay? I did. You did. Yes. Well, you know, you, can, you can't just text through that. <laughs> no. No. Well, some people would, so thank you for that. But no, I'm all right. Again, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not freaking out about it. I'm just, it's just food for thought of, okay, just another... Just another challenge we have to put up with that other people in our world don't get, who aren't in our world because, you know, an earthquake in Broome is not going to affect their peeps who work in any other industry, pretty much. So that's just another part of life that doesn't, they don't get, you know, hmm. about how, we, how we think. It's not their fault because, why would they? I've only just thought of it myself. Yeah. So, you know, it's not their fault. It's just another aspect, you know, whenever there's, um, Someone dies underground overseas, which is pretty often scarily. Um, yeah. Or, you know, any time there's a plane crash even, you know. And I always seem to watch air crash investigations the night before I fly. What's with that? Oh, God, no. I seriously do. I don't mean to. <laughs> it just happens. And then I'm sitting on the plane thinking, and I'm really, as I'm going upstairs, I'm checking out the rivets, like I'm full noise, paying attention to all the briefs. Uh, like I never, I never usually do because I'd watched the air crash investigations the night before and bugging me dead, I'm usually in the emergency seat that far. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're lucky I watched air crash investigations last night because I'm all over it now. I know. Anywho, we should stop. This is probably going long, long, long. Yes, I'm going to go to sleep. Yes, go to sleep, my darling, and thank you so much for the call. And I'm all right. It's just, you know, um, send all the angels over to protect all our people. Over here? Absolutely. Or, or I any will. possible seismic dramas that could hurt anyone open cut underground or anywhere in the... Well, it doesn't really matter. You know, don't, don't have to work in our game. Yeah. I know everybody um, was probably in shock. They said the shares, chairs were rocking and things were dying. Yeah, we saw it on right. the news. Shannon saw yeah. it on the news. That's how we knew. But mm. I was watching the footy because the Lions were smashing port, so... Yeah, it was like half past three in the afternoon here, so I didn't... Yeah, so half past yeah, yeah, five here, yeah. yeah. So, but thanks for that. It's just, again, hilarious that the first I hear about an earthquake in my own state is from my rallies in Queensland. And God loves social media. God <laughs> loves 
uh, smartphones because otherwise I wouldn't have known. Yeah, that's right. And now we've got this awesome recording about earthquakes that we can use. Okay, I've got to go to bed. My eyes are leaking and it's only... Yeah, I'm not. Oh, God, it's only ten past nine. Now for a word from our sponsor, Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group. Julia's my awesome accountant. She's written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker, and she's got a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard-earned cash. She's got heaps of tips and make sure that we get every cent we are meant to get and is right on the ball with everything. If you head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners, that's B-A-N-T-A-C-S, you can download a free booklet all just for us miners. And there's also a spreadsheet in there that helps you check off what tools you have for your trade, like your isolation lock, work boots, seven shirts, all of these sorts of things, and you can weigh them up and it'll tell you if you qualify weight-wise to claim your trips out to work. And that's just one of the things that they've got over there. So I strongly urge you to head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and see what they can do and find your nearest office as we come up to tax time. They're really on the ball, know what's going on with the tax department and there's heaps of other free information like property investing. If you really plan on doing some great things with your money, you want to do that, right? If you want to sell your house, can save a lot of money if you find out what to do first rather than in hindsight. And Julia, she'll, you know, make sure you get it right. And if you do it wrong, and then go and see her, she'll, <laughs> she'll up you <laughs> in the nicest possible way because she really cares about us and wants us to keep our money and not give it to the tax department. Anyway, head over to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. Hello, is that you here? Yes, it is. Hey, how you going? I'm good, I'm good. Did you ring earlier too? Yeah, I did. You said to keep trying till I got you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're just hooking the van up and then my bloody phone was flat and then so we had to put that and we just left the caravan park now. Oh, right. No way. Yeah. yeah, but that's all good. That's all good. I can talk to you now. Oh, beautiful. But how's things going? All right? Yeah, good, thank you. How's your trip going? We're up at Catherine at the moment. Oh, beautiful. You enjoying it? Catherine. Yeah, we're heading up north. Yeah, we're flowing over the bloody uh, gorge and walk the gorge and hot springs. And, no, it's been fantastic. Oh, I feel for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's taken me a few years to get this far. Yeah, no, <laughs> good on you, mate. I've, I've just come for a drive in my car because my grandson and my daughter are at my place and they've just got a whole heap of stuff arrived. So he's going through all his toys and... Oh, I'm like, right, okay. Yep, so I made myself a coffee and came for a drive down by the river. Yeah, yeah. good, good. So, so how can I help you? What do you want to like to know? Done a podcast episode about the recent earthquake that we had over in Western Australia. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, my sister's partner felt it, and it was 200 k's off of Broome, and he... Yes. He was on site, well, trying to sleep for night shift at Mika Thara, and I had a look, right. and that's 1,700 kilometres away. They go a long way, don't they? And I've had a few... Oh, they certainly do. And I've had a couple of people ask me what the effects are, especially underground, but in mining in general, and also, like, what happens when there's been an earthquake? Do you evacuate the mine, go and have a look? Do you have uh, radar you know, seismic readings or... Yes, yes. And yes. I had no idea. I know, Mo, but I asked yes. my partner. He works underground. He's a real miner. <laughs> That's his nickname yeah, on, on the him. podcast. Um yeah, good on him. And oh, I call him that. Yeah, well, you know, they're real miners. Just ask them. They'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, 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 we do. That's yeah, right. That's it. But he said, you know, they have the tarps for other weather events which is yes, a triggered action response plan. 
and they're in place yeah. for most weather events like lightning and cyclones. But he's not that's sure right. if there's one for earthquakes. That's why I thought I'd ask you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Well, it, it has been brought up before, and because we don't really get earthquakes up here, it's sort of very, very rare. And um, I know back in New Zealand they had a big earthquake back in 1967. Uh, but, uh, it was called an Ungahua, and, and that's just north of Greymouth. Mm -hmm. And w what happens, all our mines in New Zealand are in what they call the Paparoa Ranges. That, uh, it's all in, in mountains. So, so w uh, we go in the side of mountains and, and do our, uh, uh, set our mines and that up. But the big one in 1967 was, I'm pretty sure it was about an eight or something like that. It, was a, it devastated some of the towns, like hills just collapsed and mountains and everything. But the guys on night shift, what I remember, I wasn't there at the time, I was still in school. But the guys on night shift said they never felt a thing oh, underground. Wow. So, so, so whether the shock waves go close to the surface, which, which I'm only guessing, you know, I'm not a ge geologist, but um, so that, they never felt a thing until they got out. And it's funny you should ring because we just went to some caves south of Catherine. Cutter Cutter Caves. And we were talking to the guy there, and he said the big earthquake here, he was underground. And he didn't know anything about it until he actually came out to the surface. And he's only, I think they're only about 250 metres underground there. So there, so we don't really have a, um, uh, I don't think we've got an earthquake car. But what would happen, if there's an earthquake, a big earthquake, uh, they, would, uh, they wouldn't form us, control wouldn't form us, and we would evacuate probably the mine, and then we'd go back in, and then wait till to pass, obviously, and then go and go and do inspections. Uh, of the, uh, all the deputies that will go and do inspections before we go back in. Like any event, we have if we evacuate the mine, that's what we've got to do is go back in and inspect the work areas, travel roads into the mine. So that's what would happen, I'd imagine, and that's what I would I would, I would be doing anyway. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Can you just tell my listeners, please, Buck, uh, what you do underground? Well, I'm a deputy uh, coal mining, obviously, uh, at Moranbar. And, um, yeah, so, so I'm with you long wall development. Um, things are working pretty good. And, yeah, so that's what I've, I've been underground for 46 years, so yeah, a long time, so I retire next year, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> but, I, but I enjoy me mining, you know. We've had a lot of... I've done all types of mining. I've been very lucky in my career, you know. Yep. I've done hand mining, hydro mining, road head. I've sunk shafts, drifts, um, all that kind of stuff. I've worked with a lot of explosives. Um, not so much nowadays, but in the old days I used to. And I've had my own company and everything. So I've sort of done most of it. I've been an under manager before. So but I, I enjoy being down with the men. And that's why, that's why I wrote that book, of Mine Leanne, because it was about... It's about the blokes. Like everyone forgets about them. We go on about mines and they shouldn't be here. They shouldn't have this, doing this, that. But they forget about the blokes themselves and the humour and, the, and the camaraderie underground. You know, mm. it's, um, it's it's so important. You know, and we need people. In the old days, you used to have people to watch your back because we didn't have the safety we had in our days. And in those days, when you used to go out the edge of a goat, and a goat's a big area which had been extracted. And then we used to take the coal, we used to shoot the coal, four big holes up up in, in, on the side of the goat, and then and then fire them, and then we'd go and shovel them. Mm. And uh, we'd shovel that coal into we skips. And you, you needed your mate to watch your back while you're up there boring. So he's your eyes and ears while you're doing the work. And that's what you need, you know. And so we sort of forgot a wee bit about it nowadays with all, the, with, with all our safety and that. It's, it's a wee bit different, you know. But I, I like to... Um, put into my boys like we work as a team and we are a team and that's how we work and any decisions we make are not just mine I, I do a lot of brainstorming and work with, with the crew and and my officials too obviously but they usually let me do my own thing so I'm quite fortunate well I guess that's got a lot to do with why you're it sounds like you're a very popular uh deputy very popular person in mining yeah, and well, I did love the book by the way I, oh, did you read it? Yeah, oh, I've I've read some of it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Great pictures. Oh, it's so good to see all those old mining pictures. And I oh, shared a was... little video on my Facebook page as well oh, of good the book. On you. Well, I appreciate that, you know. But it was 
the hardest part took me three years to do that book. Yeah. And a lifetime of memories, obviously. But mm. um, and there's a lot of things I've missed out. You know, like you know, when we come to Australia, you know, like it was just amazing. You know, and the people. Like uh, I got quite sick when I first come over here, and you know, I was going to go back home. But if it wasn't for the people of Blackwater and our friends, you know, we probably would have taken the family back to New Zealand. But yeah, and we stayed, and it's just an amazing place. And, mm. Yeah, we're still enjoying it every day. You know. I did have one one fella message me who's a very close friend of mine and he said, oh, I see you've uh, got my old mate's book. Do you remember Rusty? He worked with you at Oakey, yeah. I think. Oakey Creek? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, Dave. Yes, Amanda. Yes, she used to, her and my daughter went to school together. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, he's, but, a, he's a Kiwi as well. He worked yeah, underground. He yep. He is. He's a really good bloke, and Amanda used to knock around with Holly, my oldest daughter. Oh, know. right, yeah. So, yeah, 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 when they were at school. So, yeah, no, no, I've met, look, I've met some amazing people and people that have helped me, and, you know, and I've helped them, and I hope I've installed some some ethics in some of the some of the miners I've trained. I think mm. I have, you know. Yeah. Like, I still get messages from boys I haven't seen for, like, 10 years or something. They'd ring up, just how you go, and just sort of touch base, and yes, things travelling. Yeah, you know, so it's great, you know. It's a real mining family, isn't it? Well, it, well, it is. And about being a deputy is not about being a boss and sort of telling people what to do. It's about being practical, you know. And things change. Underground things change from, from hour to hour, minute to minute things change. And you've got to be able to look at that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, and it's about people, do, you know, just listening and talking. Communication is, without communication, you've got nothing. Whether it be mining, uh, police force or whatever. Your army, without without communication, you really got nothing. Mm, that's right. Have you got, while I've got you here, because when you come back, we are yep. going to sit down and have a proper beer, and I want to... Yes. Yes. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be I awesome. That. Yeah, and yes. we'll hear more on your actual mining story. I'd love to dig deep oh. in... <laughs> I'd love to <laughs> dig deep into that. Do you get it? Dig, right. mining? Yeah, yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's yeah, my little no, line. No. That's my party yeah, trick. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I would just before I let you go, so you can get out to your next uh, adventure. Yeah. Have yeah. you got anything you'd like to share with the listeners about the recent mining deaths? I've been on the ABC and Triple J, and I've certainly had my two bobs worth. So I wonder what your thoughts are about. Um, why there seems to be so many, and what you know, what can we do? Like, yeah, uh, look, um, to comment on that, I'd um, you know, like it's about just just um, looking at the bigger picture. I think you know, it's it's, it's again, it's communication, and it's um, um, you know, I can't say I really don't know what really happened to those guys. Like, it's so sad. Mm. I feel so sorry for their families. You know, but. Really, like, open cut to me is, like, it's pretty different to, to, to what I can, you know, sort of, you know, comment on, really, because I really don't know. But, yeah. but uh, you know, like I say, I'm very sorry for those families. And mm. there's always, when, when an incident happens, that there always should be a, a stop. And I reckon, you know, go back through what happened, and everyone should uh, uh, should be involved in that, not just open cut, anyone, because we can all learn from, uh, from, from a uh, fatality. I know the CFME, you have been calling for a safety reset across all mines, and I just saw yes. yesterday that it's happening. And oh, well, that's a good thing. That's yeah. not bad. That's a good thing. Mm. Yes. Yep. Yes. I had a conversation with my sister about it, and we ended up, my biggest message was, can we at least at the pre-start meetings acknowledge that something's happened, someone's died in a mine, be, and yes. have a minute's silence for the the. Uh, person, the operator, or whoever you know, the coal mine worker yeah. is passed, or the miner doesn't yes. have to be coal yes. or quarries. There's yeah. been a couple in no, quarries. No, he's, he's exactly right. But I, I must admit, at our mine we do that. We mm. uh, make sure that that happens, and the awesome. um, the issue GS or the under managers, they they mention to us first thing in the morning before we have our main meeting yep. uh, with the blokes, and uh, we always have that minute silence, and we reflect on them and their families. You know. That is so what, good. What, what should happen? Well, do you know the sad part, Buck, is I've had people contact me this week, or this past two weeks, and it 
wasn't even mentioned at the pre-start meeting at all. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's pretty poor pre-start. And then it, you know, that's... it's like the elephant in the room. Okay, yes, an incident has happened. They don't know what happened and how it can affect them and their sites and their procedures, but at least bloody acknowledge that someone's died. Oh, look, You yeah, know, you can't exactly just right, because... do nothing. No, no, mm. no, that's right. Well, we always get an acknowledgement. Um, they tell us what they can. Of course, when it's under investigation... Uh, you can't say too much because we, right. we don't know. Man- and management can't say too much because they uh, only know what they've been heard. But until it actually comes out and finishes the inquiry, um, but we always take that minute silence and, and think of their families. And I know uh, we've, we've put money in before to other blokes. We used to put money in years ago. So mm. uh, for the families, you know, especially they're doing it really tough. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, you, you know, like, like, you know, it's hard for me to comment, Leanne, on on the open cut boys, because I really, really don't know. All I've heard was just uh, um, one of the machines fell over the high wall or something. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know I, I don't really know. No, that's fine. It, yeah. It's more, I guess, uh, your answer was what I was it, kind it, of expecting. It's about the people. Right. They're people, they're not statistics. Let's no, look out for each not, other. You know, and, and that's what miners are, but sometimes we've got to sit down and talk and... You know, you get a lot of young blokes, they come into the game and they just want to get the money and sort of run without thinking, you know. Like, mm. it's a career change. It's a career for them if they want it, you know. Yeah. And, you right. know, and you say to them, you know, what are you sitting on there putting bolts up the last four years? Oh, well, you know, I'm happy doing that, you know. And that's fine. But, I mean, there's always a career opportunity somewhere in, in what work you do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Always try to better yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, and just learn. Ask lots of questions. Mm. I did. I used to get sick. I used to get clipped around the ear asking <laughs> too many questions. But you know, but I, I learn, and I learn every day. You know, I don't know. I don't know at all. I learn every day I go. Usually, how silly some people are, but you know, uh, not all the time. But, you know, but, but you do learn every day, and, and it's to ask questions. I ask questions. Yeah. I forget things. So you know, yeah. you got to ask. That's awesome. But I, um, I hope that's helped you out, Leanne, anyway. It, and it I'll, uh, certainly has, Buck, and I'll let you go. However, it would be remiss of me not to mention that one of those deaths this year was underground, of course, at Moorumbah North. Yes. I can hear yes, my listeners, but, yeah, because I know yes. someone who was out there very close to it. So, yes. Um, yeah, well, I didn't yeah. know that boy, but he's from Serena, too, because I live just out of Serena. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that boy, but yeah, no, very sad. And again, probably communication is the biggest thing. Yeah. So, uh, to you, Buck, thank you very much for having a quick chat with me about this. And this is our first meeting, so I'm looking forward to a few more. And hello to your wife in the passenger seat. Hello. Yeah, but we'll do that. And anything I can help you, if any listeners have got any questions, I, and if I can answer, I will. You know, I'm, I'm sort of here to help, you know. That's fantastic. And to hand on my knowledge to, to young miners, so it, it might help them. Yep, it certainly will. And um, thanks for jumping on board, Team Mad Mumsy. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, thank no you problem. and safe thanks travels. Right, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, how good was that? Sorry if we spoke over each other a bit there, but he was on speakerphone and I was. And there's a bit going on at my place, so I've taken my coffee, my Sunday morning coffee, and I'm recording this in my car down by the river. So I know I'm not going to get dogs barking and kids playing with toys. And um, what a fantastic bloke. Oh, my God, I can't wait to sit down and have a beer with him. I was going to do it just before they went away, and I said, look, you're packing to go away. It was literally that weekend. Uh, We'll catch up when you get back. In the meantime, I've purchased his book. Oh, a sunbird is sitting on my windscreen. Oh, I love a sunbird. All right, there's a sign to go. Thank you so much for listening to this episode all about the earthquakes and how it may affect mining. I'm trying to be a bit more regular now since I was on the ABC and they said that uh, Mad Mumsy has a weekly podcast. I'm like, oh, weekly. Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to try and crank some out. I've got some great guests lined up, something a bit more positive. Surely there will be no more deaths, no more deaths to talk about in our mining industry. 
And I've got a new collaboration with my sister, our very own hard hat mentor, called Steel Cap Sisters. It all started off with the hashtag one minute for our lost miners. But moving forward, it's going to be our online hub. We're going to do a lot more fun things together. We're just going to talk about random stuff because we have some great conversations over a couple of cut the wine sometimes I might tell you so I'm recording them all putting them all together and we have a, a new home base and it's called steelcapsisters.com and also on Facebook we've got 10 whole followers now two of which are me and Mad Mumsy or three <laughs> and the hard hat mentor so come along on that journey we're going to talk about a few fun things not just mining but leadership as well because uh, that's her jam not me on you know she's very she can relate to the corporate people as well as the workers the miners um and oil and gas as well whereas uh, I like to think that I can connect on a more emotional woo woo level so we're going to blend together and see where the journey takes us we'd love you to join us but of course until then please share this podcast with your mates Follow me on all the things, Mad Mumsy, M-U-M-Z-I-E, on all the social medias. And thank you very much. And I shall talk to you next week. Yee, next week. Look at me go.